Hey, how y'all doing? This is Big Lee with Hustler Spirit. I'm here with an urban legend. Uh, we're going to get right to it. We're not going to waste a whole lot of time. Uh, his name is Fleece Johnson, nicknamed the Booty Warrior. He's here to have a conversation. It won't be a uh, back and forth question and answer thing. I'm going to let him tell his story. And uh, we just going to wrap today. Hey, how you doing, Fleece? Doing all right. Everything all right with you? So far. So far? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you're here. Uh, man, let's get, let's get right into it. Man, what was the young Fleece like? When did you get started? Where was you born? And uh, tell us a little bit about your childhood. Well, I was born in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, West End of Louisville. Projects called Southwick. Works as most valid projects in Louisville. And I live right across the street from the school, Duval. Yeah, my, uh, my parents went to Duval. Uh, what about, uh, when did you, when, when did the minutes come out? Because you, you guys started well, pretty early. Yeah, my minutes came out, yeah, early. I said I was about, I was about 12 when it came out. Well, what was your first crime? Well, my first crime was uh, stealing a car. At 12? Yeah. Wow. You weren't I, playing. No, nah, I wasn't. And I used to steal cars. I had a little gang. And we steal cars and we go mess with the police. You know, I drive right up to the parking lot when they change shift, run into one of them, cuss them, make them chase us. And we had a position where we would take them through the alley to initiate to get in our gang. You would have to do this, bring the police through the alley, we'd be sitting on the cut. And when we see your car, up out of the alley, we know they right in back of you. So when they come out of the alley, we'll hit them, flip them, flip their cars and shit. So this went on for quite a while, man, and the police caught all my little gang members, and they all told on me. And so now they want to get me. So, but they could never catch me because I was too good. You know, at least I thought I was, right? Right. And then one night, on 30, uh, 34th Street, they blocked the whole street off in a U, just a, a, a horseshoe, right? And uh, it's about 30, 40 police cars out there, and all of them just opened up, start shooting. Wow. And uh, they thought they killed me. And the ambulance was already there, and the people in the projects came out, they heard all the gunshots and stuff. So the police told me, he said, if it wasn't for your nigga friend, we would have killed your black ass. So I spit on him in the back of the police car. Well, he went for his gun, and the other police that was driving took his hand off the starting wheel to try to stop him. And we on Broadway, and the car's going like that. And so they called back up, and they took me out of there and put me in another police car, right? Well, I went to the children detention at the time. Was it JCYC? No. It wasn't? No. This children center, that's okay. what they call it. And, uh, my mom could have got me out that same day, but she said she's going to let me stay there for the night. So the next day we get out. So the Courier Journal newspaper, the leading newspaper in Louisville, in uh, Kentucky mainly, they put that on the front page uh, at shooting right there. So we could have got some money over there. But my daddy, he wants to go up to the police station Tell him that uh, he ain't going to file no lawsuit, that he taught me a lesson and all that. He was just talking stupid, and I just got up and ran up out of the, the little office room, came outside, two police was talking, and one of them's car was stolen, and I jumped and stole it right there and there, right? Stole the police car, right? Right. And I'm known for doing a lot of stuff, and I started carrying pistols when I was 13, two of them, 45. 
knuckle plated. I had twins. And uh, so I robbed everybody. I robbed crap gangs, dope fiends, prostitutes, faggots, sissies, uh, you name it. I was noted for it. I was the most feared young person in Moab at that time. You know, and I ain't have no fear of the police, right? And uh, as a matter of fact, another thing, they document you, I had a cousin called John Sanders. And in the projects of Colin Holmes, I'm driving through there in a stolen car. They got him spread eagle on the ground like this, you know, making him, you know, it's shameful. I got out of the car and drew on the police, took their weapons, got my cousin up out of the street, and we took off. That's the type of person I was, right? So I was such a menace that when they finally caught up to me, they said, we're going to send them to the penitentiary. You know, I got locked up for 16 robberies, eight shooting and wounded, and a car theft. So in a plea agreement, I took 12 years. At 16 years old? No, I was 15. At 15? Yeah, I was 15, and they sent me to the penitentiary. Even though back then, they had a law back then, that juveniles can't go to a duck prison. They sent me. They say fuck that law. They sent me. So when I get to prison, the same newspaper, Courier Journal, they came down to interview me my first day. The headline read, 16-year-old prisoner wants to get out and go straight. That's the headline. Mm -hmm. So, and they still got that headlines in the career, John. I had a friend that she had to pay $15, $20 to get it, you know, but they still got it on file. So, when I hit prison, you know, I see a lot of people out of robbed and stuff, and they talking shit. Oh, it's just going to be a good day. Look who they just brought in. But what they didn't realize, I had two brothers locked up, two cousins, and a uh, handful of the die hard gangster niggas, you know. Yeah. So I started fighting down there, and my brother, they run all up to my brother, tell your little brother this and that, for we heard him, my brother, like, you ain't gonna do shit to him, you know. And so I fought and fought. And they had this dude down there named Reggie, big old. I'm talking about, you know, back then they was wearing afros. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker had a big ass chest. His chest was so big that he can put a king good on his chest and level it. It stuck out so tight, <laughs> you know. And every time I go take a shower, this nigga would come in the shower behind me. All them muscles and all that shit. I ain't have no muscle, you know. And he used to stir at me, you know, I look over at him, it nigga was washing up, stirring right at me. So I'm like, you know, I tell my little partners and shit, what's wrong with this nigga? Just keep stirring at me and shit, right? How old are you at this time? 16. Wow. This nigga here is in his 30s. Hmm. You know, and uh, I'm a child, you know, and I guess he thought he had some fresh meat, you know. So, one day, you know, this went on and on. I ain't never say nothing to him about it. To be truthful, I was sort of like afraid of this nigga. For this nigga was this huge, man. I just said, God damn, I can't do nothing with this nigga here, man. Just ignore him, right? But one day he came out of the shower and brushed against me naked. And say excuse me, but I know the nigga did it on purpose, right? So I said, okay, that's it. So they had glass paint jobs that they sold to the inmates out of commissary. So I went back there and took a paint job, dumped the shit out, and broke it. I come back in that motherfucking bathroom. He said, uh, he was going to the store that day. 
and ask me if he can pick me something up from the stuff. Nigga, you don't know me like that. So I already know what you done already brushed up against me naked. I felt your goddamn dick hit my side of my leg, right? All that excuse me shit. Come on, bro. I took that motherfucking time job and I said, I, man, I cut the fuck out of this nigga. This nigga ran, I'm right in the back of him, cutting him, slicing him, everything. When I broke the glass, it, it had points on it. And, uh, yeah. And so, because I did that, the guards and the administration back in, they said, look, you think you a tough little son of a bitch. We gonna send you somewhere, motherfucker. And we gonna see how tough you are. So they sent me to Eddieville, the maximum security penitentiary. 